Some people know, but many may not know that you're by uh, academic training a mathematician uh, from no less an institution than an uh, than IIT Kanpur. Uh, that you studied law, like you said, much later, uh, and you came into the trade union movement uh, because uh, of your guru. Uh, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about him? He is no more. Uh, uh, yes. you but I think it, I think it would be interesting to hear uh, the you know to when we hear your views and the choices you've made in your life, and when you attribute some of this to your mother, who was a seminal in influence, and then Comrade Nyogi, it would be interesting for me. I think for people to know what these people stood for and therefore how they influenced you. Yes. No. So uh, I, I'm really happy you asked me this question because I think more more people should should know about Nyogi. So Shankar Bhavan Yogi was a trade unionist. Mm. Like most trade unionists, he was very brave. He was assassinated at a very young age. He was barely 48 when he was killed, 46, 48. But he was a very creative thinker. And he, uh, so uh, the, you know, Chhattisgarh Mind Shramik Sang and Chhattisgarh Mukti Morcha, which he created yeah. and then later on, he went into the engineering industry and the cement industry and textile industry around about. So basically, he became a, a, one of the legendary leaders of the working class in Chhattisgarh. But you see, there, there were some things which are very different about his version of trade unionism. Today, you know, trade union is a bad word. Mm. People think that, oh, union people are only those we'll who make trouble. Us. They yeah. go on strike. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and they just demand wages. They don't do work. They are lazy guys. They, you know, this is the picture. Mm -hmm. And he was a person who used to say that you know, look around you. Everything has been created by the workers. So if they can create everything, why can't they create a, a new society? And uh, that is really what he had in his mind about it. And uh, he had this idea that. Uh, Chhattisgarh is a rich land of poor people. Yeah. So Chhattisgarh is actually enormous yes. resources. I mean, coal and iron ore and everything. I mean, uh, alumina, bauxite, it has everything. Which is but why people which is are why... very poor. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is because of that model. Yes. So, while we think about production, we also have to think about distribution. So, we have, you know, capitalism is a system which has which has developed a social mode of production but an individual mode of extraction yeah. so the surplus and profit go to individuals yeah. but the process is actually uh, uh i remember he, he used to do an exercise and he used to say okay th so this is a steel spoon so let us think whose all labor has gone into the steel spoon and then when you started counting mm -hmm. yes there's the miner who does the mine Meaning there's a truck transporter who brings it to the steel plant. There is the steel worker who has built the steel, and then there is the you know the, the the person in the in the shop who has melted it and brought it to that shape, and then there's a shopkeeper who has sold it. And, you know, actually, enormous amount of labor has gone into that spoon. Mm -hmm. But so the the process of, of production have got socialized, but the profit continues to be individualized and not spread over yeah. other people. So. Um, so he had a, this idea that even the union should not be confined to an eight-hour union. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it should not be confined to just wages and bonus and this yeah. and that. The union has to work for the all-round development of the worker. Hmm. So in fact, the, this union had 17 departments. It had a health department. It had a, uh, it had a savings department to teach hmm. people to save. It had Mahila Mukti Mocha, which fought very strongly against alcoholism and actually made a lot of people leave alcohol. Uh, it, it, its education department ran 11 schools. Its health department, you know, uh, brought up something as beautiful as Shahid Hospital, which is still there. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also tried to very um, creatively think of systems like when there was a proposed mechanization of the mines, which would have thrown everybody out of work and just got big machines there. Um, he took, uh, he, 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 he created a concept of semi-mechanization, which was to give, uh, to give a system which 
would improve productivity, but would still be cost effective and not not retrench anybody. So, you know, these are the things that we need to think. Your formative uh, working life was with this kind of outlook and with this kind of worldview and exactly. training. Exactly. And in fact, he was very strict about uh, about um, honesty in work mm. and, and no corruption in the union and all that. And he, the leaders of the unions would be working like everybody else. Mm. You know, he didn't allow the leaders to be separated out from the workers so that they could be lured by the capitalists. Yeah. Yeah. You know, always lured and then later on they're blamed off. So, you know, you are the ones who first prize them away from the people. Mm. So, this um, and the most important thing about the union was it did not just look about look for itself. It, it had a red and green flag. The, the red was for the workers and the green was for the farmers. Yes. Now, the peasants, Adivasis mostly yeah. around about. So, actually, the union would go out and work among those villages uh, whatever problem they had, they would come to the union. The union would try to solve them, whether it was a corrupt, you know, forest officer or whether it was, you know, um, uh, a problem of not having a pond. All the workers will go and help them to dig that pond or whether it was, you know, so many issues. Uh, so, so he had this concept of Sangharsh or Nirman. Sangharsh bhi karna hai, Nirman bhi karna hai. Nai dunia ka Nirman karna hai. So I think we need that. <laughs> We need to rely on, to to believe that people can do it. It it was the poor people of this country who ultimately uh, who ultimately forced the British to leave this country. Yes, absolutely. I mean, let us remember: as long as the 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 Indian National Congress was a small little debating club, nobody bothered about it. It yeah. was after Gandhi ji came in yes. and made it a huge, yes. uh, you know, uh, mass movement. Yeah mass movement yeah. and it, it was not just Gandhiji in fact they used yeah. to have a lot of respect for each other's movements at that time mm -hmm. I mean Subhash Bose played a yeah. role the uh, you know the 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 communists played a role everybody played a role and 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 all those movements put together uh, mm. basically it was the people so if they can do it then they can do it now mm -hmm.